Hey everybody, this is Miss Stahl. In today's math lesson, we're going to learn about, that's right, you guessed it, bar graphs. Now, to get us started, we're going to go visit our friends Annie and Moby over at Brain Pop for a short introduction. What is a bar graph? A bar graph is a way to organize and show data. You can write the categories on the bottom. The three dinosaurs are the categories. Then you can write the numbers on the side. The numbers in our bar graph show how many people voted for each dinosaur. Let's see. One student liked the Stegosaurus the best. So I fill in one square. Six people voted for the Triceratops. So I color in six squares. Seven people said the T-Rex was their favorite dinosaur. You can also put the categories on the left and the numbers on the bottom. You can display the same information in a different way so you can understand it better. How can you use bar graphs to understand information? Bar graphs help you answer questions. Which dinosaur did people in our class like the best? Right, the T-Rex is the most popular. Which dinosaur did people like the least? Hmm, the Stegosaurus got five fewer votes than the Triceratops. You can even use the bar graph to figure out the total number of students who voted. Just add the votes from each category. 14 kids voted in all. Now I'm almost done with the survey on where to go for our next class trip. So far, the zoo is the most popular. It has 16 votes. But I don't have your vote yet, Moby. Where do you want to go? The moon? I don't think the bus will get us there. Now that we've learned a little bit about bar graphs, here's a photo that shows us the parts that a bar graph should have. Bar graphs have a title. Remember, that tells us what the graph is about. It also has a number line and labels. Now, we are going to use a bar graph and analyze the data to see what it's telling us. So in a bar graph, we know that each bar shows information. What is the other word that means information? Tell a family member if you remember. That's right, it's data. You can compare the lengths of the bars to analyze the data. What is a title that describes this graph? Well, when I look at the categories, I see markers, paintbrushes, and crayons. And those are the art tools. Well, who are using the art tools? And at the bottom, I see the number line that shows us the number of children. So I know that children are the ones using the art tools. Hmm, what do you think a good title for this graph would be? Take a few seconds and think about what title you would give this graph. I bet you came up with a good title. Here's the one that I thought of. Our favorite art tools. So now we're going to use our graph, our favorite art tools, and we're going to analyze the data in it to see what it's telling us. All right, so here's the first question. How many children chose paintbrushes? So I can look at my bar graph, find paintbrushes, and I can do two things. I could either count the boxes or I could just go to the end of the bar and go straight down to the number line to see how many it's showing us. And there are six. So I know that six children chose paintbrushes as their favorite art tool. The next question says, how many children chose crayons? So again, I can either count the boxes, one, two, or go to the end of the bar and look down at the number line. And I see two. So that tells me that two children chose crayons. The next question asks, how many more children 
chose paintbrushes than crayons. Well, I remember that anytime I hear how many more or how many fewer, it wants me to compare or to find the difference. And what does it mean when we find the difference? We need to subtract, that's right. So we need to look at paintbrushes and crayons and subtract to find the difference. Well, I know that paintbrushes had six votes and crayons had two votes. So I know that six minus two equals four. So I'll put that here. Four more children chose paintbrushes than crayons. The next question, which art tool did the fewest children choose? And we're going to circle it. So I'm gonna look back at my bar graph and I see that crayons has the shortest bar. So that's one way I can figure out which has the fewest. Another way I could figure it out is by looking at the numbers again. I know markers has five, paintbrushes got six votes, and crayons had two votes. And I know that two is less than six and five. So the fewest was crayons. The last question asks, which art tool did the most children choose? We're gonna circle it again. So again, I look at my bar graph and I see that paintbrushes has the longest bar or that it has six. And I know that six is greater than five and it's greater than two. I made my own graph using some data that I collected from the kids in my class. I asked them which one was their favorite outdoor activity. They could choose from swimming, biking, or hiking. So when they voted, we can see that Six children chose swimming as their favorite outdoor activity. Two children chose biking and two children chose hiking. So when I look at my information, I can see that swimming is the favorite outdoor activity of the kids in my class. And biking and hiking both tied for the least favorite with only two votes each. So now it's your turn. Create a bar graph, gather your data, you can ask the people in your house or your family and see what they have to say. Then draw your lines and create your bar graph. Once you're done, you can take a picture of it and send it to your teacher. We can't wait to see what you come up with. We'll see you guys soon. Bye.